Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about relative motion analysis. So when analyzing rigid bodies beyond fixed axis rotation we've got our two options. We've got absolute motion analysis and relative motion analysis. Uh, so in absolute motion analysis we have a set of constraint equations uh, to determine position of a set point over time with respect to ground. Now once we have that position equation we take the derivative to find velocity and the derivative again to find acceleration of that point. Uh, so we're using calculus uh, on our position and velocity equations. In relative motion analysis, a series of equations describe the position, velocity, and accelerations of intermediate points leading up from the ground to the point of interest. Uh, and general polar motion equations are uh, used to describe the velocities and accelerations. We kind of pre-derive our equations and we add the pieces together to get the uh, end full equation for velocity and acceleration. All right, so absolute versus relative motion analysis. Absolute motion analysis does involve calculus. You're going to be taking derivatives of functions. It does not involve any coordinate transformation, so everything will be in x and y directions from the start. And it's generally faster and easier for simple problems. Relative motion analysis, on the other hand, so does not involve calculus. We're going to have the predefined or pre kind of derived functions. Uh, it does involve coordinate transformation. So things are going to be in the r and theta directions and we're going to need to put those into x and y. Uh, but in the end I think relative motion analysis is faster and easier for more complex problems. All right, so jumping into this. In relative motion analysis we identify the velocities and accelerations by breaking the motion down into steps uh, and adding those steps together. So um, what separates this is we use those predetermined equations it's kind of pre-derived uh, for this and these are all based on stuff we've done with the polar coordinate system so we're going to be talking about r and theta directions with all of this so we're going to wind up with the same equations we had in absolute motion analysis but we're going to be taking a different route uh, to this whole thing um, so in the end it's the same result it's all about what's the easiest way to get to those final equations all right, so we had scalar equations in absolute motion analysis. We had the x and y positions. Uh, but here we're going to start with vector equations. So we start with a vector equation, and then we're going to need to break it down into x and y pieces. All right, so this is our overall equation for, lo for velocity. So this is just a two-step process. So velocity of point B with respect to ground would be velocity of point A with respect to ground plus the velocity of point B with respect to A. And same thing except with acceleration. All right, so each of those pieces is going to be hopefully either a simple rotation or a simple extension uh, of some piece. If we have both, we can still deal with that as well. It'll just be more complicated. All right, so here is our robotic arm. We talked about this before. So I've got a fixed ground point at A, uh, and then member AB can rotate, rotate about point A and we've got like an elbow joint at point B uh, and member BC can rotate about that elbow joint at B. Uh, so I've got two lengths and then two angles theta and phi in this case uh, and I've got the end point C which is what I'm looking at. Alright so important in all, this whole thing is we have a coordinate system attached to each of the arm pieces. So X and Y is fixed to the ground uh, and I've got R1 and theta1 and that's going to be fixed to member AB in this case. So going from point A out to point B, that is my R1 direction, and then 90 degrees from counterclockwise from R1 is going to be theta1. Alright, so I have another coordinate system, R2 and theta2, attached to member BC. So going from point B towards point C, that is the R2 direction, and then 90 degrees counterclockwise from that is going to be the theta2 direction. And as AB and BC rotate around in this whole system, the R1 and theta1 remains kind of stuck to member AB, and the R2 and theta2 directions remain stuck to member BC. All right, so as stated earlier, the goal in all of this is to break the complex motion down into simple pieces. So the general equation for velocity in the polar direction was r dot u r plus r theta dot u theta. So hopefully we have just rotation which would leave us with r theta dot in the u theta direction 
or if we just have extension along fixed axis, we would have r dot in the ur direction. So if we have both, we just have to rely on that top equation, uh, r dot ur plus r theta dot u theta. All right, moving on to acceleration. Uh, this is our original equation for acceleration. So we had this whole mess, so something in the r direction, something in the theta direction. Uh, if we assume we have rigid body rotating about an axis, we can eliminate the variables that relate to changes in r. So no extension uh, leaves us with this. So we get rid of everything with r dot and our double dot in it. Or if we have extension along a fixed axis, we would get the following. So our double dot would be the only thing left in there because anything theta dot or theta double dot would be eliminated. All right, so if we have, again, if we have uh, extension and rotation, we use the top equation. If we just have rotation of a piece, we have the second equation. If we just have extension of a piece, we just have the third equation there. And all of these are going to be kind of step by step. So I deal with member AB first and then deal with member BC. All right, so here's my whole diagram. So I've got angles theta and angles phi. I've got the two lengths in there. Uh, so two meters for the bottom AB and uh, 1.5 meters for uh, BC. And I've got my R and theta directions drawn in there as well. So this would be my velocity equation. So I'm going to have two times theta dot, that's R theta dot in the U theta one direction. And then 1.5 phi dot, so that's R phi, uh, theta dot for the BC section. So notice that they're in, they're both in the theta directions, but they're in separate theta directions. So u theta one and u theta two are not the same direction here. All right, so acceleration, uh, we have again, just simple rotation. So these arm pieces are not extending, they're just rotating. Uh, so I've got negative two theta dot squared in the ur one direction, r theta double dot in the u theta one direction, negative 1.5 phi dot squared in the ur2 direction, and 1.5 phi double dot in the u theta2 direction. So in acceleration, I've got uh, kind of four different magnitudes in four different directions here. All right, so we have to deal with these multiple coordinate systems because I've got all these different directions. Uh, originally, uh, all of them are in R, R1, R2, R, so on, theta1, theta2. Uh, I'll draw all these directions on your original diagram like we did. Uh, make sure you've got those vectors kind of well understood at this instant in time. So in order to combine terms, we need to convert everything back into x and y. So you're going to use sines and cosines uh, to break uh, those magnitudes down into r and theta, or all of the angles uh, with the r and theta down into pieces. So I usually start by writing out a single equation showing each of the vector directions. So like if we go back here, I would uh, draw a little arrow in the r1 direction uh, above that first piece of the acceleration down here. I would draw a little uh, arrow in the theta1 direction uh, with the angle for that theta1 direction. Same with all of these pieces. So I like to draw those uh, vectors right with the pieces. Uh, in the end, we should, and then we use sines and cosines to break everything down. Uh, so we're going to wind up with an x equation and a y equation. So all the x components go into one equation, all the y components go in the second equation. And this should give you the same equations you would get with absolute motion analysis. Uh, we don't have to do any uh, derivatives of the sines and cosines though. Uh, it all takes care of itself uh, with these vector equations. All right, so general process. We're going to start by creating a diagram of the body with the key distances and angles labeled. Uh, be sure to label your r and theta directions. Also identify what distances or angles remain constant and what distances or angles are going to change over time. So just like absolute motion analysis, if it's a constant, we write it as a number. If it is going to change over time, we need to write it as a variable. All right, next pick a point for analysis and use the predetermined velocity and acceleration uh, vector equations. So um, I was looking at point C for my robotic arm, and then I had two simple rotations. So I pulled in the simple rotation uh, equation for velocity, and I did that twice because I got two, two rotating pieces. Uh, and then acceleration, I had, uh, again, just simple uh, rotation. And so I pulled in the uh, second equation on my acceleration slides there uh, and put those in. So I had two pieces for uh, the first part of the arm and then two pieces for the second part of the arm. Um, 
So draw in the r and theta directions. I like to, like I said, draw in uh, those directions, like those vectors with angles, uh, right with the equation. And we're going to use sines and cosines to break your vector equation down into x and y scalar uh, equations. So the scalar equations we can actually solve. Um, and then we're going to use those equations that we've generated. So I would have, um, so position, we can, we can generate that like we want. That would be exactly the same that we do for absolute motion analysis. So we could have two up to two equations there. We would have uh, the two velocity uh, equations that we generate after we break it up into x and y. And we'd have the two acceleration equations uh, that we break up into x and y. So start with the vector equation, break it up. So plug in what we know, solve for what we don't know, uh, and that is the end of the process. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.